So I'm going to say that, and then we're going to get into this story. So yesterday on the program, I covered an alleged attack, an arson attack on a Wisconsin anti-abortion organization's office. And yesterday, I was very skeptical of whether or not uh, this was a false flag or not, because we have seen multiple times um, Republicans and right-wingers love false flags. Now, again, is it? there's been a couple of times, you know, let's be fair, where left-wingers or liberals have done false flag tactics, right? You know, it's, it's, a, ha- it's a tactic that exists. Historically speaking, Republicans and right-wingers are more likely to use it. Though, a group has claimed responsibility for this arson attack. And so, I want to read to you their statement. Uh, this is on Madison.com, but also the original post. Uh, and source is Robert Evans. You, some of uh, people that follow me watch his show as well. And so I want to read this article with a little bit more info and then uh, read the statement. Now, again, I want to be very clear. I am a news host. I do a YouTube show. I do a show on YouTube. That is where this show takes place. So... I'm just giving you the news. An organization calling itself Jane's Revenge has claimed responsibility for setting fire to the Madison headquarters of a statewide anti-abortion group and warns of more violence to come if similar organizations do not disband nationwide. The group's first communique was shared anonymously with an investigative reporter for the online news site Bellingcat, who posted a series of tweets describing it early Tuesday morning. Quote, this was only a warning, the group states. Is there like the full statement? Okay, here's the full statement. This is not a declaration of war. War has been upon us for decades, a war which we did not want and did not provoke. Too long have we been attacked for asking for basic medical care. Too long have we been shot, bombed, and forced into childbirth without consent. This was only a warning. We demand the disbanding of all anti-choice establishments, fake clinics, and violent anti-choice groups within the next 30 days. This is not a mere difference of opinion, as some have framed it. We are literally fighting for our lives. We will not sit still while we are killed and forced into servitude. We have run thin on patience and mercy for those who seek to strip us of what little autonomy we have left. As you continue to bomb clinics and assassinate doctors with impunity, so too shall we adopt increasingly extreme tactics to maintain freedom over our own bodies. We are forced to adopt the minimum military requirement for a political struggle. Again, this was only a warning. Next time, the infrastructure of the enslavers will not survive. Medical imperialism will not face a passive enemy. Wisconsin is the first flashpoint, but we are all over the United States and we will issue no further warnings. And we will not stop, we will not back down, nor will we hesitate to strike until the inalienable right to manage our own health is returned to us. We are not one group, but many. We are in your city, we are in every city. Your repression only strengthens our accomplice ship and resolve. The group's name echoes the name of Jane Collective, which provided illegal abortions in Chicago in the late 1960s and early 1970s before Roe v. Wade. Um, so anyway... This is the statement. This is a group that has released a statement. Um, and here's some more photos. Now, again, I the reason why I thought this was a false flag is I think cursive is way too neat. That's just me. But if a group is going to claim responsibility, um, then I'm willing to say that they're probably responsible. Whether or not the group is a false flag, I mean, uh, remains to be seen. 
either way, again, once again, I am a news show. I'm a, uh, I'm a news host on a news show. I'm not here to take a side on anything. I do not endorse violence because that is not the role of someone on a news program. And uh, that's not what I do. I do not endorse violence. I think that violence is bad. Um, and you should probably not be violent. But that being said, I mean, you can read the statement for yourself. You can interpret the statement yourself if you'd like. You have, you're free to have your own interpretation of the statement. Um, but also I do not endorse violence. I do not endorse anyone in my live chat or in my community to engage in violent behavior or any illegal behavior because the law is sacred. I love the law and I follow the law. I'm a law abiding citizen. Not to be confused with that movie where that guy is clearly not a law-abiding citizen. But, you know, that's the joke of the movie. But this isn't a movie. This is real life. I love the law. And I love to abide by the law. And I'm a news host on YouTube.com. And so, that all needs to be said. But anyway, a group is claiming responsibility. You can see the original tweet thread by Robert Evans. This is how I first saw this uh, this morning. This is very new, by the way. This came out this morning. Uh, so you might be hearing about this here for the first time. Uh, now, again, like, it is factually true. It is factually true that the right has gotten away with murder many, many times. Look at Kyle Rittenhouse as a very recent example. But also, again, doctors have been shot, assassinated. Doctors' homes have been blown up. Medical facilities have been blown up and bombed and yet the government is still acting as if it's the left that's so violent the right and there is like a study by like the fbi or some shit or fbi statistics i know people on the right love fbi statistics so they might get a kick out of this but it found that like as far as political violence is concerned they found that well, they split it into three categories for some reason. Right-wing violence, left-wing violence, and Muslim violence. Why? I don't know why that's a third category, but okay. And they found that left-wing violence is uh, accounts for less than around 10%. Less than 10%. I forget the exact number. It's like 7 or some, But it's around 10% of uh, all political violence. Now, most of the time... Muslim violence, they're right-wing Muslims, right? They believe in a right-wing, authoritarian, fascist view of Islam, right? So that means approximately 90% or so of groups committing violence are right-wing. So if that's the case, and yet the government acts like the left is, is so violent and evil, you know, again, it's just factually true. Those are factual statements, that the right is responsible for almost all political violence in this country. And it's been that way for a long time. I don't think the left has ever engaged in actual organized violence in any capacity in this country throughout its entire history. So, outside of potentially uh, abolitionist movements uh, during the slave era. But really, since then... When have you seen left-wing organizations actually engage in violence as a tactic? So, whether or not this is a false flag, whether or not this is true, this is a statement uh, by the group claiming responsibility. You can make your own interpretation um, if you so choose. Uh, but again, once again, I am a news host uh, and I'm reporting the news. So, there you go.